I'd like to call a meeting to order, if I could, please. Supervisor Hess, could you lead us in the invocation, please? Please bow your heads. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon those gathered here tonight. Guide us all and give us the strength and desire to continue to serve you, our families, our county, our commonwealth, and this great nation with cheerful hearts and dedication of purpose. Father, in 12 days on July 4th, we celebrate the 240th anniversary of the birth of our country, one nation under God. And we thank you for the blessings of liberty and the freedoms we enjoy. In anticipation of this celebration, we ask that you make us more deeply aware of our heritage, recognizing not only our rights, but also our duties and responsibilities as citizens. And Heavenly Father, we offer our special thanks to those who serve and have served in our armed forces to preserve the United States throughout its history. Father God, we ask for your strength and your guidance to do the tasks you set before us. Keep us concerned about the welfare and improvement of our county, the safety and pride of our homes, and the moral and spiritual values that guide our community. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. 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 Supervisor Dunn, would you lead us in the pledge, please, sir? Please rise. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Adoption of the agenda, any changes? Um, yes, sir, if, if the board would please add under county officials number five, certification of annual evaluations of county administrator and county attorney. I neglected to remind you to do that when you came out of close uh, meeting last month. Thank you. Entertain a motion. So moved. Agenda is amended. Second. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Thank you. Citizen comments. This is the portion of the, the meeting where citizens comment on any agenda Mr. item. That is, no, I'm sorry. You adopted the agenda, but we need a motion for the consent agenda. I'm sorry. I missed it. Consent agenda. Tentative agenda items for consent are A, E, F, and N. Move adoption of the consent agenda. Motion to adopt. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Second. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Thank you. Now, citizen comments, agenda items only, not subject to public hearing. Did anyone sign up? Yes, sir. Um, first is Lenny Mil Milholland, and after him is Ruth Perrine. Welcome, Sheriff. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, member of the board, I'd like to publicly take an opportunity to thank the hundreds of people who came out Saturday morning through yesterday at 645 to help us try to locate an 85 year old lady um, in an area of Frederick County called Lake Frederick. Um, she was reported missing at about 1125 on Saturday morning. At that point in time, we had fire and rescue personnel, uh, pe personnel from my agency in Dogs East, Blue Gray Search and Rescue, Virginia State Police, and a multitude, hundreds of people that came out to help look for this lady. And uh, publicly, I would like to thank everybody for doing that. If it wouldn't have been for the help of everyone, we probably wouldn't have found her as soon as we did. So thank you. Thank you, sir, for all you do and everyone else. There was another? Yes, Ruth Perrine. Ms. Perrine? <clears throat> Welcome. Good evening. I am Ruth Perrine and I live in the Back Creek District. Somehow I got roped into being on the latest Clouser House Committee formed by Supervisor Dunn. I'd like to think that there are some attributes in me that said I'd get the job done. Our committee has had two meetings so far and with the third scheduled for next Monday. I'm very happy to be working with this group of individuals who are brimming with enthusiasm, knowledge, ideas, and a strong will to see the Clouser House survive. I am confident with this group, every avenue possible for this 
House will be explored and a thorough examination will be conducted in order to provide you with the knowledge to make an informed decision on this House. We are making history right now. As this investigation unfolds, we will discover the potential of this structure. We may find after our exhaustive work that there is no other option but to demolish. What is important, though, for future generations is that we did our best to try to preserve a part of our history. We are demonstrating what it is to be responsible, what it is to value what we have, and what it is to take pride in our forefathers, and what it is to show our respect and appreciation for all the hardships they endured so we may live in the comfort and freedom we have today. It is my hope that you will grant us the proposed 90 days to provide you with what is needed to meet the stipulations outlined by the Public Works Committee. I will make sure that our journey is well documented and that this documentation will be housed in the Handley archives for future generations. Whatever the outcome, we and others will know the measures taken to try to keep an integral part of who we are. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Are there others? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. Or to supervisors' comments, are there any? All right. Committee appointments, tab B. <clears throat> Northwestern Community Services Board. Do we have any thoughts there? I might say I've reached out to someone and I am still waiting to hear back on that that I thought would be a good fit, but I have not had a firm commitment on that at this point. Very good. Thank you. Historic Resources Advisory Board, we want to pass that one. Parks and Recs. Thoughts there, member at large? Okay. Social Services yes, Board. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I believe that you as chairman will make the recommendation on Parks and Rec with the consent of the rest of the board, but I believe that is your prerogative. I, I can do that, but I'd welcome thoughts from others as well. Okay, that's fine. Sure. Um, social services, Red Bud? We're still working on that. We don't have an answer at the moment. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, development Impact Model Committee. Um, looks like we have what we need to make a decision. How would the board like to handle that one? Many members, I feel a little uncomfortable making the resolution. All right, motion. So we'll find someone. <clears throat> Go ahead. I'm obviously I'm not on that committee as well, but uh, but no, it, I'm on it. I, that's why I feel okay. uncomfortable. That's what I'm saying. For not to appoint himself. I'm sorry. <laughs> then I would then I would make a motion that we adopt the uh, resolution. Okay, we have a motion to adopt those as stated, um, and those as recommended from top of Virginia. Is there a second? Second. 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 Is there any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Those folks are adopted and we are grateful for their service. Request from the commissioner, refunds. Yes, sir, we have two. Um, the first one is a request to authorize the treasurer to refund DL Peterson Trust, the amount of $6,268.75 for proration of personal property taxes in 2014 and 15. Uh, the refund results from trucks and vehicles financed by this company, but either sold or moved from the locality. So the board needs to um, move to authorize the treasurer to pay the refund and make that supplemental appropriation. How would the board like to handle this one? I'd make a motion for approval of the $6,268.75 and also the supplemental appropriation uh, for the D.L. Peterson Trust. Motion to approve both. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Any discussion? Supervisor Slaughter. Aye. Supervisor Wells. Aye. Supervisor Hess. Aye. Supervisor Dunn. Aye. Chairman votes aye and the motion carries. And the second one, Mr. Chair, is uh, to authorize the treasurer to refund <clears throat> Valley Proteins Incorporated $6,052.64 
for business equipment taxes in 2013 and 14, resulting from an audit of the company for 2016, I mean 2013 through 16, on reported business equipment. Um, and as a result of that audit, not only are some um, items being taken off and we're therefore refunding, they also added some um, additional items for which we are receiving uh, additional revenue. But what you need to do tonight is authorize the refund of $6,052.64 and make that appropriation. Questions? Uh, not so much on this one specifically, but in reviewing the packet, I, I noticed something, uh, uh, some mention of the how far back in the time frame. Is there a limit on as far as how far back we can go um, to a pre I need to ask Alan. Ms. Murphy, I'll answer for you. You get a good answer that way. <laughs> Welcome. Ellen Murphy, Commissioner of Revenue. Yes, uh, it's current and three years back. Okay. So you would go, you know, to 13 if you found it in 16 without any difficulty. My apologies for not asking that in advance. Thank you, though. Okay, that's fine. Any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Murphy. All right, how would the board like to handle this one? Move approval of the uh, refund and the uh, corresponding supplemental appropriation. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chair. Second. Any further discussion? Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Supervisor Hess? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Chair votes aye, and the motion carries. Brings us to a performance agreement, Kingspan uh, Insulation LLC. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move approval of the, uh, the performance uh, uh, agreement, the resolution contained in the packet uh, for Kingspan, um, which provides incentives for expansion of their facility and adding additional employees to the local workforce. The motion to approve, is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Second. Is there any discussion? Anyone? Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Hess? Aye. Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Chair votes aye and the motion carries. Brings us to item number five, to certification of evaluations of the county administrator and the county attorney by the board um, at their last meeting. Supervisor Hess. Mr. Chairman, I move that the Board of Supervisors certify the annual evaluation of the county administrator. Heard the motions are second? Second. S second. Any discussion? Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Supervisor Hess? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Chair votes aye and the motion carries. Supervisor Wells? I mean, Supervisor Hess? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that the Board of Supervisors certify the annual evaluation of the county attorney. The motion is there second? Second. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Hess? Aye. Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Chair votes aye and the motion carries. Thank you, sir. That will bring us to committee reports, public works committees. Supervisor Wells? Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. The uh, public works committee met on Tuesday, May the 31st. Um, all members were present. And uh, we discussed the following items to bring to the board. The disposition of Shawnee uh, Council House, the Clouser House. Um, at the regular meeting of the board, they had turned that back to the Public Works Committee for our review and recommendation back to the board. Uh, after, during the meeting, there were many, many comments. They were attended by a lot of folks. Um, and I made a, a motion at that time, which was adopted by the Public Works Committee unanimously, that we grant a 90-day study period um, to those individuals wanting to preserve the council house with the following um, items that they would, uh, they would be working on. The study shall identify who will assume ownership and liability for the house. The ownership option may or may not be available depending on requirements specified by the Department <coughs> of Conservation and Recreation related to the classification of the Cherokee Dam. And B, the study shall identify and secure a funding source and or sources for the construction and renovation and continuing maintenance of the house. And last was C, the study shall identify potential uses for the house and determine in writing from DCR that these will not jeopardize the current Cherokee Dam classification. These potential uses shall be 
also be reviewed by the, and approved by the Shawnee Advisory Committee to verify compliance with the sanitary district requirements. I bring this motion to you uh, and ask for a second and an approval from the board. So for the motion, is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Second. Discussion? Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Dunn. I appreciate what Supervisor Wells has done. I just want to clarify that um, this committee already has met a couple times, that if this committee is making good progress, that your intent would be to allow a continuation of some time, unspecified, and we're not talking about years, but we're talking about it for a few more months, to complete uh, anything that needs to be done. So if there's a good effort made with reasonable expectation, then your intent would be to allow that time to continue. Is that correct, sir? Uh, during the meeting, it was discussed, and the folks that were there heard that, and that is, number one, we all wish them well and hope that they're successful in their uh, adventure of, of doing this. And number two, the reason we placed 90 days was we have been working on this for some time in the past, and we felt that this 90 days would give an encouragement to quickly get to the issues at hand, and when they bring that back at that time, if they made adequate progress, certainly we would extend that. And your intent also is that this, the Board of Supervisors that will make the final decision on the disposition of the House. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you, Mr. Wells. That's correct. Further discussion? Anyone? <coughs> All right. We'll vote. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. <clears throat> HR Committee, Supervisor Hess. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the HR Committee met uh, on Friday, May the 13th. Um, and the action item uh, for the board coming out of that was the employee compensation and performance philosophy. It was presented by staff uh, and it was discussed by the committee. And the committee unanimously voted to uh, recommend that the board approve the uh, uh, employee compensation and performance philosophy. And I so move. So a motion, is there a second? Second. Second. Discussion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dunn. During that meeting, um, the state of Virginia, the Commonwealth of Virginia, had said that the cost of living adjustment was going to be 2%. So for our elected representatives on both the uh, House of Delegates and in the Senate, I would encourage them that the actual CPI was 1%. If they would specify a specific number, which was accurate, namely 1%, it gives the county administrator a little bit more flexibility on that. So going forward in the future, I would hope that uh, the state delegation would just look for an accurate number to give the county uh, administrator greater, greater flexibility. Thank you. Further discussion? Anyone? Do you want to roll call or voice OK? I think voice is fine. OK. Further discussion? Motion is to approve. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. I'd just like to also add, Mr. <clears throat> Chairman, that the uh, um, committee also reviewed the uh, reorganization of the county administrator's office and a bonus ordinance, uh, which was referred to the Code and Ordinance Committee. And that concludes my report. Thank you, sir. Transportation Committee, Supervisor Slaughter. Uh, yes, sir. Um, items requiring action. The uh, Transportation Committee met on May the 23rd at 8.30, and the first item uh, requiring action would be for the Korean War Veterans Memorial Highway. The committee reviewed the attached request from the Korean War Veterans Association, and the Board of Supervisors would need to make a request uh, to the Commonwealth Transportation Board in order to help move this along. Um, um, the county would be responsible for the cost of installation and upkeep of the signs. However, the association has noted they are willing to reimburse um, the cost. And um, Mr. Fisher made a motion of which I seconded at the Transportation Committee uh, meeting, and I would make a motion that the board um, move forward with, with their request. So a motion to approve, is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Okay, and the second item requiring action would be the bicycle and pedestrian restriction on Route 37, which was a little odd to me. I felt like it should already be there. <laughs> but, but nevertheless, VDOT had uh, requested uh, and contacted staff regarding that, that um, 
they had received a request from the state police that Route 30, 37 be closed to pedestrian and cyclist as well as other forms of transportation not suitable for high speed conditions. In order for them to take this request uh, to the Commonwealth Transportation Board, VDOT would need a letter of support um, from the board in our locality, um, of which a motion was made at the transportation level and a second. And so I would uh, so move uh, to the board that, that we uh, approve that request. Motion to approve, is there a second? Second. Second, is there any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Okay. And then there were just some other items for, that were non-action, um, just some updates on the interstate and primary and secondary road updates, the county projects updates, and uh, that would conclude my report. Thank you. All right. That brings us to the public hearing. 12-month outdoor festival permit request to Cedar Creek Battlefield Foundation pursuant to the Frederick County Code, Chapter 86 Festivals, Section 86-3, Permit Required, Application Issuance or Denial, Fee, Paragraph D, 12-month permits. All events to be held on the grounds of Cedar Creek Battlefield, 8437 Valley Pike, Middletown, Virginia, property owned by the Cedar Creek Battlefield Foundation. Is there anyone presenting this request. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Good evening. I'm Dr. Stanley Hirschberg. I'm the president of the Cedar Creek Battlefield Foundation. Um, we're going to have this event, uh, Manassas reenactment July 22nd to the 24th. And my um, business manager, uh, Patrick Kehoe, is handing out some booklets on the event. This is a national event. We have so far over 2,300 uh, people registered. We probably will end up about 3,000 participants in the reenactment. We probably will have between four and 5,000 people that are visiting Frederick County, going to spend their money, watch living history, and then go home. <laughs> so I think it really helps Frederick County. I've been involved with this organization uh, since the first organizational meeting in 1988 and I've seen every one of them. And I think it's a good quality event. The reenactors like it because it's on an actual battlefield. Whereas if you go to Manassas or Gettysburg, it's always n not allowed on a national park. So we would like your permission to have that. We also would like permission to have our annual Cedar Creek reenactment, which we've had for 26 years, and that would be October 15th and 16th. Uh, in addition, we've had two requests from people that want to film this, these events. One is a group out of Quebec, Canada, who wants to fi film both events and um, put it into a production, em emphasizing what the reenactors, how did they get into this? Because people that in, from Canada and also from France don't understand why people would do this. But it put Frederick County again on the map, and I think it would be good. We also have a request from another group, Warm Springs Productions, which um, does this kind of high definition footage of the reenactment. They have used <coughs> these in the Fox News Channel Le Legends and Lies, which is now in its third season. And season one and two cover the history of the American West and the American Revolution. And next season is going to be a 12 ep episode program that will cover the American Civil War the events leading up to it and its aftermath. So I think it, uh, again, puts us out on the map in a good, positive way, our, our way and it brings uh, income uh, into Frederick County. And I hope you approve it. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions? Any questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Would anyone like to comment concerning this application? Anyone at all? Well, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing portion. Board discussion, recommendation? Move approval of the permit. Motion to approve, sir, second? Second. second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, no. Thank you, sir. Planning Commission business. We have a public hearing, conditional use permit 04 16 for Ms. Vicki Nash. Mr. Chairman, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, yes, this is a, before you tonight is a conditional use permit um, for property located at 215 uh, Food Orchard Drive.
Drive in Gore. Uh, it's currently in the uh, Gainesboro Magisterial District. The property is currently zoned R5, um, residential recreational community, and its land use, uh, current land use is a residence. Uh, this proposed use, as you pointed out, is for a cottage occupation for a nail salon. I can direct your attention to the uh, map on your left, give you an idea where this property is located. Uh, to the north, south, and east, uh, the property of the property is zoned R5, a rural recreational community. However, the property to the west in the state of West Virginia, uh, this, this uh, word snowy uh, or white, that's the uh, state of West Virginia where this is located at, uh, part of the property. Uh, cottage occupations are permitted in our RFI zoning district with an approved conditional use permit. Uh, this proposed cottage occupation will take place uh, within one room of the applicant's dwelling. There will be no more than five customers per day assigned with this conditional use permit, and there will be no uh, employees also associated with the conditional use permit. Um, should the Board of Supervisors find these uh, this used to be appropriate, the Planning Commission recommend the following conditions and also staff work with the applicant to, uh, to refine the conditions, um, and which is a, she's also in agreement with. Uh, number one, all review agency comments and, and uh, shall be complied with at all times. Number two, there'll be no signage with this conditional use permit. Number three, the hours of operation for 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, or Monday through uh, Saturday, that was one of the changes that happened to the Planning Commission. We asked the applicant and, um, that she would like to have a, uh, some Saturday operations. Uh, there will be no more than five customers per day. Uh, uh, no employees uh, also will be permitted, uh, excuse me, no employees will be permitted beyond those re residing in the, per, uh, the, the premises. And number six, any change of use um, or expansion will require a new conditional use permit. I would like to direct the board's attention. You're looking at our, uh, Frederick County's Health Department commented on this application. Uh, the application was an adverse comment. However, um, if I'm just going to go back to the map real quick, the drain field for this property is actually located in Hampshire County. It's in our front, our, in our front lawn, if you will. What the staff did was, and also the applicant, we contacted Hampshire County. They had no objection to this conditional use permit. Uh, Ms. Nash actually went to Hampshire County, told them what they were doing, and did get a, um, a soil write-up of what it was for the park. We, we were okay with it. It satisfied Hampshire County, too. With that, Mr. Chairman, I'll be happy to answer any questions you or any of the uh, supervisors may have on this conditional use permit. For the record, uh, Ms. Nash is also here. Thank you. Questions, Mr. Chair, and anyone? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yes. <clears throat> it would appear from the map that um, the driveway actually enters from the property from West Virginia. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. That's a private road. It goes back yeah. there. Yes, sir. Um, so regarding the sign, and just hypothetically, um, somebody could place a sign in West Virginia, and there's not a whole lot we could do about it. That's correct. However, this subdivision has covenances. That's why we don't have a sign. Answer your question, okay. yes. Okay. The reason we have no signs, and she didn't want it because she checked her HOA, which does cover part of West Virginia. Gotcha. Thank you. Appreciate it. Other questions? Anyone? Thank you, sir. Anything you'd like to add, Ms. Nash? Okay. Were there any questions of Ms. Nash? All right. It's a public hearing. Would anyone like to comment concerning this conditional use application? Anyone at all? Anyone? All right. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing portion. Discussion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move approval. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Second. Is there any further discussion? Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Hess? Aye. Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Chairman votes aye, and the motion carries, and conditional use permit is approved. Number two is an ordinance amendment to the Frederick County Code, Chapter 165, Zoning. Ms. Perkins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. This is a request to revise the zoning ordinance to provide for an allowance to permit divisions of rural preservation tracts for public road dedications or utility dedications. Now, currently, the ordinance does not permit future divisions unless it adds to the size of those tracts. So the amendment before you tonight provides uh, an allowance for the boundaries to be modified for the, track, uh, the tracts under two conditions. First, the future division would only be allowed for the widening of an existing VDOT-owned road, and second, for a public utility dedication. So it's a very minor revision. Um, 
where it's been so far. The DRC reviewed this back in February, the Planning Commission in April. It came, excuse me, came before you at your April 27th meeting and it was sent to public hearing. The Planning Commission held a public hearing at their June 1st meeting and they did recommend approval. So tonight we're seeking a decision from the board on this proposed amendment. I'll be glad to see any questions. Questions, Ms. Perkins, anyone? One question. Yes, sir. Is there any um, restraint on how wide a road can you build, for example, a you know, eight lane high? Is, is there any restraint, restraints on that? Is there any, are there any restraints on public utility, meaning power lines or something of that nature? No, I mean, typically public, um, like power lines, trans transmission lines are usually exempt from um, a lot of these requirements, but this is mainly for like sanitation authority, um, which is kind of the catalyst for this amendment was a san sanitation authority lot. Okay. Um, but as far as the widening, since it's a VDOT owned road, it would be up to the state to determine the width necessary. Um, so we didn't put any limitations on that. Thank you. Other questions, Ms. Perkins, anyone? Thank you, ma'am. It's a public hearing. Would anyone like to comment concerning this proposed ordinance? Anyone at all? Anyone? All right. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Recommendation? Mr. Chairman, I would move that we uh, accept the uh, dedication of the public utilities rural preservation lots as presented. So we have a motion to approve the ordinance amendment. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Second. Is there any further discussion? Supervisor Dunn? Aye. Supervisor Hess? Aye. Supervisor Wells? Aye. Supervisor Slaughter? Aye. Chairman votes aye and the motion carries. Um, we have a rezoning 06-16 Simples Property Revision. Ms. Perkins. Again, thank you. This is a request to amend the proffers for the Semples property, also known as the Whitehall Commerce Center, to allow for the use of concrete tilt-up walls within the M1 zoned portion of the property. Now, the site is located adjacent to Martinsburg Pike, Route 11, about 250 feet north of the intersection of Woodbine Road and Martinsburg Pike. If I can direct you to the screen to your left, the subject property is outlined in black and shaded in the blue color. Um, you can see we have Martinsburg Pike that runs along this area and then Woodbine Road. Now the site was originally rezoned back in 2004 to the M1 and B2 district with proffers. Now those proffers limited the facade materials to concrete masonry brick, architectural block, drivet, or other simulated stucco, as well as real or simulated glass. So along with the addition tonight of the tilt-up concrete walls, there's some very other minor proffer revisions that really just deal with eliminating previously completed proffers or items that only apply to the B2 section, which is located right along Martinsburg Pike. As, when, as I stated, the M1 is the only portion of the site that's being requested for the proffer amendment. The B2 portion will still be applicable to the 2004 proffer statement. And this is the proffer generalized development plan is, is the same one that was proffered in 2004, so it's carrying over to the new rezoning. The Planning Commission held a public meeting at their June 15th meeting, and they did recommend approval. So this is a minor proffer amendment. There is no public hearing requirement, only a public meeting requirement. So tonight, following um, staff's presentation, we are seeking a decision from the board on the proposed revision. I would be glad to any questions. And Mr. Patrick Sowers is here from Pannonia, Pannonia Associates on behalf of the application. Thank you. Any questions, Ms. Perkins? Anyone? I just had a quick question on yes. the removal of the completed proffers. Do we yes. normally do that when proffers are completed? Sometimes when proffer amendments come forward and they've already completed a proffer, it really just depends. Some have removed them, some have left them. So it really wouldn't have any impact on the property or the no, property sir. owner? No, sir. Okay, thank you. We would only do it under a revision. Mr. Questions, Ms. Perkins, anyone? In the proposal that we read, there were a series of lines that were, by, that were written, there were a series of lines that were strike, struck in, st struck out. Yes. Um, I assume that those were the proffers that were met, correct? Correct. In the red line portion, the, the red line with the strike through, those are the proffers that were either completed um, or they only apply to the B2 in the front. So there's been no change then on the proffers other than, other than the completion? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? No, I would just add to uh, Supervisor Dunn's comment regarding um, fire and rescue contributions because I think that's probably where you were 
uh, going with that. Those proffers were done when the B2 land was developed. So the county has already received those proffers of the, the fire station and um, public safety. Thank you. Other questions, Ms. Perkins, anyone? Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Sowers, anything you'd like to answer? Chairman, members of the board, Patrick Sowers with Pannoni. Um, we feel it's a pretty straightforward application. Staff did an excellent job covering it. So um, we'd simply ask for your support, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Questions for Mr. Sowers, anyone? Thank you, sir. Thanks, you. All right, how would the board like to handle the request? Yes, sir, since it is Stonewall, um, I would make a motion for the rezoning of 06 dash one six the simples property with the revision to have the tilt up uh, walls motion to approve the revisions sir second second mr chairman second is there any discussion supervisor slaughter aye supervisor wells aye supervisor hess aye supervisor dunn aye chairman votes aye and the motion carries Brings us to board liaison reports. Are there any? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hess. I'd like to report that the uh, uh, I serve as uh, liaison to the tourism board. Uh, and they met last Thursday, June 16th, at the tourism office on Pleasant Valley Ray. Um, it was a the last meeting for two board members who were rotating off due to term limitations, and uh, also a new chairman and vice chairman were elected. I'd like to uh, note for the board that the uh, uh, tourism board has started the process of reviewing the bylaws of the commission and uh, the memo of understanding with the city and the county. Uh, also, we heard uh, some big news at that meeting um, was th with the cooperation of Virginia Tourism Office and destination marketing organizations throughout the northern Shenandoah Valley, like Winchester Frederick County Tourism Board, has led to a PBS television episode of Family Travel with Colleen Kelly being filmed in the Valley this coming July. It's going to include seven stops at sites from Lexington to Winchester. And uh, it's become clear to me that tourism is becoming a more important factor in our local economy. And the new tourism director, Justin Kern, seems to have added a real spark to local efforts. Good news. Thank you, sir. Other board liaison reports, are there any? All right, that brings us to the portion of our meeting where our citizen comments uh, on any issue that uh, you would like. If you would, come forward. Name, Magisterial District, limit your comments to three minutes, please. The great question ever asked in the recorded history was who do you say that I am? So I am Patsy Gokenauer from the Red Bud District, and I would like to address the comprehensive, the meeting that we had in our Red Bud District on the comprehensive plan for 2035. And I felt there was very little uh, advertisement with this meeting, this meeting that everyone wanted to have their input. But uh, I found out that it was on Thursday the 9th at the Greenwood Mill uh, Elementary. But uh, of course, I was thinking maybe that it was like 7 o'clock. I hadn't heard the time, and the information was very limited. Um, so, and this was a meeting that they were hoping, Frederick County was hoping they would have a lot of input there, a lot, a lot of people present. And so I had to go through a very serious series of, of seeking this information that I needed. And in, even in calling the county administration office, um, the receptionist was not aware, she did not have it on her calendar, uh, about the time and place of this meeting. And then also um, uh, the ones around her did not know of this, but I was referred, she said that, um, are you sure it's not Monday the, the 13th? And I knew of another meeting that was being held here at that time. So then the long and short of it was that I was referred to the planning department. 
and um, that they would know about it, and indeed they did at the time. But there were no signs on the road. There was no feeling that it was important for me to be there at that meeting. And even up into the Greenwood uh, Elementary, uh, there were no indications of exactly where this meeting was being held. And but entering the cafeteria, finally got there with a friend's help. Um, the, uh, the program and the participants were very few. Um, and, um, but the big and main comment after the um, presentation, the PowerPoint program, was that uh, why build roads? And uh, well, first of all, before that, the main topic of, of the five or six people there was water. They were so concerned about water. And the question they were asking, why roads open up more land for development when there is no, not a substantial um, source of water? Then the director of planning went into this and named our sources. And then we, he began with saying that we buy so many million gallons of water from Winchester and, um, and then also the quarries were in, indicated. Um, but this was not the projected, as I feel, the present day need for our community and much less to meet the projected needs of water in, near, in the near future. So in, I feel that we should, as a community, and as your leaders of our community, we should do an all-out effort um, to learn and bring together to educate the importance of this very natural um, and important resource water. Learning such things as our watershed address and our groundwater that we're on karst. And I'm aware, I'm aware of a mortal law, moral law, which says that we must be good stewards of God's creation and that we will be held accountable for the way we use it and abuse it. So therefore, how important is water? How important is water in your life? Well, without water, there is no life. So who do you say that I am? I'm Patsy Gokenauer, a servant of God. Thank you. Anyone else like to comment? Any issue? Anyone? Board of Supervisors comments, are there any? Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Dunn. We've not met for approximately a month. In the last month, I've attended two meetings. One was an issue dealing with bullying. There was a person um, from Frederick County that has spoken to a number of groups and set together a group of people to try to address the issue of bullying in schools. I'll give you two examples. One was a gentleman who said everything was fine and then committed suicide. I spoke with his parents. They never knew he was being bullied. A second person was a high school senior, 17 years old, who her parents thought was being bullied. And she said to her parents, Mom, Dad, it's OK. I can handle it, and committed suicide the next day. Students think that bullying is a much more important issue than many administrators do. Fortunately, in this county, both Dr. Savine and Dr. Lamana recognize that bullying is an issue. But anything that we can do to help quell bullying um, is something that I've offered to say to them we will be glad to do. It's unacceptable for a bully to bully somebody and then just simply walk away because that's the act of a coward. So for bullies that are bullies, they need to stop. The second item is the Revolutionary War. And about a month ago, we had Charles, Mayor Charles Harborough from Middletown who looked for a permit for a reenactment in Middletown. I attended that reenactment. And as you walked into the town, 
There were the Gadsden flags, which were the flags with the stripes that say, don't tread on me. British flags and American flags. And you really took a walk back into history. This is the first time there's been an American Revolutionary War reenactment in this area. And although this area is probably more known for the Civil War or the War of Northern Aggression or the war between the states, depending upon your perspective, the fact that you have significant changes in medicine, in lighting, kerosene lamps, for example, were not in existence in 1775, as well as military weapons were pronounced. So I would hope that Mayor Harbaugh will continue that. And for this area, although there were no major battles here, two people, General George Washington and General Daniel Morgan, both resided in this area. And in an area near Third Winchester, there's a house, stone house, built by Hessian prisoners of war. So there's a history here of the American Revolution, and I think that those that are interested in history should recognize that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Any other comments? Anyone? Supervisor Walls. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move for adjournment. Move to adjourn. Second? Second. Second, we'll stand adjourned. Thank you all for your attendance and your input. Things in your ears.